What's up guys, this episode we're gonna start talking about controller tests, but we're going to focus on how to set up devise in your tests. So your integration tests are going to be hitting your routes and your controllers and then rendering your views. And those controllers often require a user to be signed in. So we're going to need to use the device test helpers to actually fake a login to our controller or to our application before we run our controller action. And that's gonna help so that we don't have to have our tests actually visit the login screen, type in the email and password, submit that, and then start our test. We are going to be able to skip all of that and just our user will be magically logged in. It basically cheats by setting the cookie directly instead of going through the real login process. And that's because our integration tests are very uh, heavy in a way because unit tests are testing maybe one little method on a model or something and integration tests are going through our routes or controllers or actions um, our models and our views so it's doing all kinds of work because it's an integration test it's integrating all of those things and testing that to make sure that it works and so our integration tests want to kind of skip as much as possible so they can run as fast as possible. And these are even faster in Rails because they're not spinning up a real browser or server, they're just running the code in Rails directly. So let's take a look at how we set up our projects controller to make sure that we are authenticating the user every time we want to request a route inside of there. So to start off, we need to write a test um, can get index, and this is just going to test that we can access the projects URL. Now we could write a route here called slash projects and just hard code that, but it's better for us to use the Rails helper method here for the route because if we added any options and decided to change it from slash projects to slash p or something, maybe to shorten it, this would generate the correct route and make sure that our helper methods are working as well. So our tests are less likely to break if we're using these helper methods rather than hard coding a route. Then we need to just assert that our response here is a success. And this is just gonna look at the HTTP response code, make sure it's 200, and if it is, great, we're good to go. So let's run this test and see if it works. So we can run our test by saying Rails test and the file name. This is gonna run our test file and that it. Um, so this is working and it succeeds, but we actually don't want it to succeed because this user is not logged in who is running the test. So it's just making a request and it has access to it. We can verify that in our browser. If we go to the projects URL, we can access that and we're not signed in as you can see in the nav bar. So we want to make sure that this uh, actually redirects you to the sign in page. And so we want to actually assert response is a redirect. So now if we run our test, it should fail. And we can go through the process of making sure that our projects controller is authenticated. So if we add our before action, authenticate user, this should make our test pass now and we are being redirected to the user sign-in page. Now, our uh, other routes in here for the show, for the new, for create, edit, update, and destroy are also being authenticated, and we can go and optionally add in some other tests for those routes. So if we wanted to, um, we could say new project URL also should redirect, and we could actually go through all of these, but it's not really necessary because our before action is going to authenticate every action inside of this controller. And our tests are gonna be just kind of redundant if we're doing that for every single route that we have. We could have that if we wanna be super confident that all of these routes are authenticated. Our test suite would make sure of that but uh, it's kind of redundant and doing extra work that we don't need to in our test suite. And as you've probably seen, big test suites get very slow and so doing duplicate work is something you wanna avoid. Now I would make sure that we have these kind of tests um, in there if we had any exceptions. 
So if we ever had an only on here or an accept, um, we would want to make sure that we definitely add tests for those situations so that if we are doing it for only certain um, actions, we want to make sure we have tests to authenticate those. If we're doing accepts, we want to make sure that users don't have to be logged in for those. So this test is a little bit redundant because we, we know that we're going to make sure all of these are authenticated. So we can get rid of this test and actually make a copy of this one. Um, and we're gonna change the description here, redirected if not logged in. And we will have can get an index here, but we wanna make sure our user is logged in if they are going to be able to get a success. So the device method that they provide, sign in, we can give it a users and we'll give it a fixture, the regular user fixture that we created in the last episode. That will give us a user model uh, instance and then we're going to use the device test helpers to sign that user in. This is the same sign in method that you might use in your API authentication or something like that, but we're going to use a special version of it for the tests and this is going to basically set the cookie directly so we don't actually have to send our user through the login path so that they can go to the sessions controller and log in. We can skip all of that and have our user just automatically logged in when we run this test. But to use this method, if we add that right now, we will get an error because that method does not exist. And if we want to add that, which we do, we can go to our test helper and include a module from device. So we want to type include device test integration helpers, and this will give us access to that method, the sign in test helper, and we can run our test now, and the logged out user cannot access the uh, project's index, and they get redirected, but the logged in user is able to access that URL and they get a success. So this is great, but we want to actually go a step further because when we create the rest of the tests for our CRUD, the create, read, update, delete, all of that stuff is going to need a logged in user. So our tests here should probably just log in a user every single time. So we don't have to have the sign in inside of each test. So to do that, we can go up here and add a setup block and actually take our line for login up here. Now we can, on this one, we will have broken that. So we'll need to actually sign out the user for that one test. And that's simple enough. We can say sign out colon user and that's going to make sure it logs out the correct user because device can actually log in multiple types of users and this will tell it to sign out the correct one. So that is all good now and we have all of our um, test passing again and now we can run a can get new and this will go to the get new project URL and we can assert response success on this one and assume that our user is logged in and it will pass out of the gate. So that's all there is to testing controller actions with device. If you need to sign in a user, you can with the test helper. And the integration test helper is the one you want. You'll probably see references to the controller test helper, which is actually the older version um, that is not going to work with Rails 5 or newer. You wanna make sure you're using the integration test helper because that is what Rails has moved to. These controller tests or integration tests where they're hitting your routes, your controllers, your actions, your models and your views and they're testing that entire integration of everything, not like a unit test where we're testing just a little piece of our app, like one single method. So that is it for this episode. We'll talk more about controller tests and integration tests in the next episode. And until then, I will talk to you guys later. Peace.